put off by how long this video is, don't worry. I tend to jam-pack my videos with as much content, as many details as I possibly can, and I try to talk pretty fast. So while the video is a bit on the long side, I don't repeat myself and I get into a lot of details about the subject that, you know, pretty much anything that I feel I can comment on and that I think you might find interesting. But hey, if the video is just too long for you to watch, chances are I recorded a shorter version and the link will be in the description box. It's not an inferior video, it's merely a Cliff's Notes version of this very video. An identity, mood review. But before I begin, I would like to personally thank Matt Damon for his valiant efforts to make sweaters look badass. I'm not sure he quite succeeds, but he certainly did a better job of it than that guy from The Girl Who Played With Fire and The Girl Who Kicked the Hornet's Nest. Anyway, Matt Damon stars in this movie about a man discovered in the water by a fishing boat off the, the sea off the Mediterranean islands, something like that. Not good on geography, sorry. And he doesn't remember anything. He doesn't remember who he is. And he gradually discovers through a few weeks spent on that boat that he knows numerous different languages and in general he his skills remain intact, although it's kind of, he sort of just picks something up and then he knows how to deal with it, He, but he still doesn't remember who he is or where he lives or anything. He f meets with a young woman called Marie, who is having a bit of trouble with this, you know, her situation. And in general, she's not much of a... She, she's not that good at keeping things, you know, making her situation work, which is in stark contrast to the Matt Damon character who may not remember who he is, but he's, you know, he's still neat and tidy and, you know, takes care of things, kind of, to the extent he can without remembering who he is. So they're obviously a bit of a, an interesting match, but, you know, that makes for good, for, for a more interesting story. So anyway, he meets her and asks her to drive him to somewhere that he, you know, he has very little to go on, but he does have a location, and so he asks her to drive him there. And meanwhile, the, the CIA are trying to find Damon, and as the movie progresses, it becomes increasingly clear why that is. And so the film follows both. We spend, I guess most of the movie, with Damon and Maria, and the rest of it we see these guys, you know, at the CIA in front of computer screens, on the phone, stuff like that, basically trying to find him and using all the resources of the CIA to do so. And you know, it, it really makes you fear when they get closer as you see them picking up the trail. And I believe that is everything I will be giving away about the plot. I have not read the Ludlum novel, novel nor any other by Ludlum, so I really can't say if this is at all like the novel, or in general, his writing. But, as far as I understand, it really doesn't... It's, it's a loose adaptation, May, you know, mainly keeping the central concept. And the, the... This is a spy action thriller, and those have been... You know, the, 
in, in the more recent years, a lot of those have really stuck. And this is one that remembers how to do them right. You know, this is in the main of, it's, it's actually very reminiscent of, you know, spy thrillers from like the 70s, 60s and 70s. You know, it makes me think of like the Jackal and such, and yet it remembers its, its roots. This is a spy movie where the police are not stupid, where an assassin hits his intended target, and, you know, where, yeah, and in general, the, the realism is pretty much present throughout. There's, there's almost nothing in this that you, like, can't believe. And even when there is something that you can't quite believe, it's very close to being believable. And that really helps, you know, and you genuinely feel, you, you dread these assassins because you know that they can actually do what they're supposed to be able to do, you know. There are, there's very little in this movie that happens because someone who was trained made a mistake, you know. Now, something like this, it's really important to have good acting, you know, great acting talent. Damon has to play someone who doesn't remember who he is. That's... Yeah, how, how do you do that? How, how do you, you know, act as if you don't remember who you are? And it's, it's, that's a very abstract concept. And Damon really pulls it off. You really believe that, you know, it's, it's also... It's important he doesn't go, like, completely vacant, because you don't want to be thinking, wow, this guy's, like, something isn't quite right in his head, you know. But you can tell when you look at him, there's something there, he just can't quite access it, you know. He doesn't remember who he is, but clearly there is something there. There was an identity. And... You know, Franca Potente as Marie is fantastic. I haven't really seen her in a lot. But, yeah, she, she does really well. Both of their characters are very credible. Admittedly, their chemistry is slightly lacking. Uh, it doesn't completely feel entirely genuine. You know, but... It's not like you... You believe both of them sort of separately, you know, and when they have scenes when they're talking to each other, you believe that they mean what they say, you know. And in general, the, the acting is just phenomenal, you know. We have, as the supporting cast, we have Chris Cooper as sort of the guy trying to make, to, to pull this together and to, to, to deal with the situation. At, at the CIA, we have Brian Cox as his sort of more bureaucratic boss, and he's also really, really good. Julia Stiles as one of the techs, I guess you could say. I suppose that pretty well covers it. I have to mention Clive Owen. I will not give away what he's playing, but he's perfect for it. And he does just fantastic. He is one of the most memorable characters in this. The... I, something that really demands mentioning is... In, in general, this is a really effective movie. It's a movie that gets almost everything right. As a sort of engaging drama, it actually really, really works. You know, when it, whenever there is an emotional scene, you really get into it. You really believe these people and sympathize and get into their conflict. It's really great at doing that. We're really drawn in to, you know, what is going on with, with Damon? Why can't he remember anything? What, what is going on? And sort of the changes he goes through over the course of the movie, we really 
believe and, and sort of follow them. The plot is quite engaging and throughout really keeps our attention. There are a few twists. It's not really a twist movie, but the twists that there are make sense. They really add to the movie. You know, they're not that kind of out of the blue just distracting you so you don't remember that the rest of the movie suck kind of twist that is all too common today. It's the kind of twist that makes sense and when you watch the movie, when you rewatch the movie, you're like, oh, and you know, it, yeah, it's just great. It's really well paced. The movie is like an hour and 47 minutes, not counting the credits, and you're just never bored. And I've now watched it, I don't know, three, five times, something like that. And it's just never boring. You know, it's not constant action, but you don't, you know, you, you're, you're interested in the parts that don't have action as well. You, you just, you want to know what's going on. And, yeah, it just, it keeps your attention really well throughout. I suppose this is a good time to get into the actual action. Basically, we have martial arts fights, we have shootouts, and we have car chases. And all three are handled quite well. The car chases, especially, is fantastic. One of the best aspects of the action is, is in this. And the... And, and with the shooting, once again, you know, these guys don't tend to miss, so it's really tense. It's not like, and people reload. I don't know why so many, well, I know why, but I can't stand how tons of action movies, people just don't reload. Where's the tension in that? It's, you know, Doug Lyman, who directed this, gets it. John Woo gets it, you know, just watch Face Off. Tell me that, you know those scenes would be, would not lose a lot of their effect if it wasn't for us occasionally seeing people reload, you know. And the, and, and yeah, guns actually have the range and the effect that you would expect, you know. The, now the martial arts I think it might be in just the DVD. I have the extended explosive edition. Because I don't seem to recall it the first time I watched it, which was on a different DVD. The fights are... they look like they've been sped up or something, and... Yeah, it just it makes it less believable. It's, it's really too bad. But they still are, you know, really well choreographed and really tense. The thing about them which really makes them work is that they're not for show, or they don't, they don't feel like they're for show. Again, something that too many, you know, action throws, we've gotten so used to just these being, you know, ever since choreography, actual choreography made its way into, you know, the Hollywood action movie, we've gotten really used to just seeing these you know, prolonged fights where it feels a little rehearsed, you know, it's gotten worse and worse, it's gotten, you know, more and more towards that end of the spectrum. This, fights don't go on, fights, you know, again, the assassins in this, they're not really trained to, you know, have a prolonged fight with someone, that's, what would be the point of that? They're, they're assassins. They're supposed to take down their targets fast, you know, and preferably completely, you know, render them, you know, neutralize them. Not necessarily kill them, but make it impossible for them to fight back. And that's what you see here. You know, fights are all about, you know, breaking the other guy's arm or, yeah, in some way neutralizing him, making sure that it, you know, ending it, and 
again, that really makes it intense. And then there's how they have... If you're an assassin, you may not always have access to your you know, preferred weapon, so they train them to fight with everyday objects, stuff that you can find anywhere, and there's some of that in here, and it is just awesome. Now, the, the music is another really effective aspect. Pretty much the entire, all, pretty much all the music is this instrumental score that was composed specifically for the movie and you know, I'm not really an expert in the in that field, but you know, they, they use some string instruments for the tension scenes and it, it really works. It's, it's, it's pretty obvious, you know, I'm, I'm not telling you anything new here, I'm just saying they actually do something that makes sense to do and it, it works. You know, they're they're not using techno music, they're not using something, you know, over overdone or really modern, again, you know, going back to the roots, 60s and 70s spy action thrillers, you know, there are a couple of other pieces of music, I'm, I'm not going to give away what they are, they're, but they're really good choices as well, and it's, you know, when that actually happens, it's sort of a, a treat, like it's it's very sparse. So when the movie throws something like that our way, it really feels like you know this is big. This is something that you know it's it's like a an an, an alarm. Pay attention. This is going to be awesome, and it is. That actually brings me nicely into sort of the the humor and the surprises. The movie plays it straight most of the way, and sort of takes itself as seriously as it should. But it also does have a little fun with the concept. And I don't mean in any kind of sort of goofy or silly way, but there are some nice surprises and some nice little sort of jokes in there. Little breaks where it gets a little, a little lighter, also to sort of ease off the tension, because this is a tense movie. This is also one of those movies where, you know, it's, it's PG-13, and as, excuse me, as such, it's allowed a few swear words, excuse me, and a lot of the time when you watch movies like that, it's kind of, ah, that's, you know, they're just making sure to use the ones that are allowed to. Here, they actually place them where it makes sense. You know, you, you hear a swear word in this, it's because something is really, you know, someone is really, you know, panicky or stuff like that. The movie characterizes the various roles rather well. With most of these characters, you pretty much feel like you, you basically know who they are within the first scene where you, you know, really experience them. You know, the, just, just a few lines and you, you know, you know, okay, this is what, that, what this guy does, this is what he's like, and these kinds of things. So we don't have to waste a lot of time on that. And by the way, none of this, another thing that can really get terrible in spy action flicks is exposition. It's, it's necessary, of course, but a lot of them do just these exposition dumps, you know, okay, sit down, we're going to show you some pictures now, and this is that guy, this is the other guy, he does this and this, you have to do this and that, you know, and it's just, it's obvious, you know, sure it's a briefing scene, but it's still really obvious of an exposition dump, and in this movie, there's just nothing like that. The exposition is all delivered very smoothly, and we really feel, you know, yeah, it just, and in general, the movie never talks down to you. I suppose that pretty much covers everything. One thing I wanted to say is this is very much 
an alternative to James Bond. This is not James Bond. This doesn't have gadgets. It doesn't have, you know, yeah, I'm, I'm, I shouldn't give too much away, but just the sort of assassins and agents here are not James Bond. You know, they're not this suave, you know, men want to be him, women want to be with him kind of, yeah, smooth, smooth talking guy. They're, they are killers. You know, it's not glamorous. It's not attractive. It's just real. They're killers because sometimes that's what the CIA needs. And, yeah, that's reality. And in general, this is a movie that very much sticks close to reality. I believe that covers everything. Please rate and comment, and hey, if you like this video, that subscribe button's just waiting for you to click it.